Hey everyone, it's Nate with Garden Roses. So I am here, um, still in College Station, Texas. I am at the Texas A&M Hotel and Conference Center. Um, the lovely people here have actually comped our room, which is really cool. Um, but a lot of people have been asking me how I pack roses for when I travel. Now, I haven't done this a bunch of times, but I figured out a system that does work well, so I wanted to kind of share that with you guys. So back in November, when I took a trip to Arizona to visit um, the Francis Rose Farm, which um, they're like a growing partner of Grace Rose Farms, um, I bought several roses while I was there. And people, there were asking me, Nate, how are you going to get all of these roses home? Are you going to be shipping them? You know, everyone was like kind of thinking I was crazy. But um, I knew that I'd figure something out and I did. So um, yeah, I bought a bunch of roses there. And um, while we were here in Texas, um, one of our customers is actually from College Station. And they said, you know, um, Antique Rose Emporium isn't that far from you, so if you have some time, you should probably take a trip there. So I said, that sounds like a great idea. And um, we wound up going there, and I bought 20 roses. So um, we're going to do a video uh, showing the process um, of getting them ready to bring them um, on the airplane. So before I get into that, I just wanted to show a little bit of photos from the anti Rose Emporium. Again, it's not too far from Texas A&M, and actually the Texas A&M Rose Fields are partway between the main campus and anti Rose Emporium, so it's just a little bit further of a drive from those fields. Um, they have a lot of outdoor artwork there, which I always enjoy seeing, uh, like this entryway that's made from terracotta pots. Their nursery stock is actually different from their mail order stock, so it was kind of neat to see some surprises. Um, they do have some modern roses, they have a line of what they call their pioneer roses, and then they also have a lot of old garden roses. There were some um, directional signs here and there, but overall the setup seemed to basically force you to wander down every single path so that you wouldn't potentially miss anything, because even though a sign in one section may say climbers, there might just be a couple climbers in a different area, for example. Um, they did have these handy wagons to pull your roses in, which we needed three of them. <laughs> um, they also had some friendly cats running around the gardens. Um, during the checkout, the cashier kindly asked if we would like any plastic to lay down in the car under the pots, uh, something that I never think about because we have a pickup truck at home and um, it was definitely helpful for the rental car. Overall, it was a pretty enjoyable experience and everyone we interacted with there was very friendly and very helpful. Hi everyone, I'm Tess with Garden Roses and I'm going to read off all the names of the roses that Nate bought. So we have Stephen F. Austin, we have Diane Summers, Madam Isaac Perrier, So that is one that I've been looking for, and I'm excited that we were finally able to get it. I did not practice these names ahead of time. Bassie's Purple Rose. Monsieur Tillier. <laughs> Tess doesn't speak French. <laughs> Thank you. 
I thought it would be funny if I didn't tell her how to pronounce these names before the video. <laughs> uh, Basie's Blueberry. Basie's Blueberry. Basie's Blueberry. Basie's So in a couple spots of this video, I've actually cut out the audio because there was a really loud train. It's heavenly ascent. Mutabilis. <laughs> what? Um, Peggy Martin. You got that one. Uh, Brazos Bell. Republic of Texas. Madam Ernest Calvin. Alrighty, so here are all the roses. Again, as I said, there's 20 of them. Um, so basically doing pretty much the same thing that I did in Arizona. The only thing is that unfortunately I forgot to pick a plastic wrap, which does make this quite a bit easier, but we're gonna just use like grocery bags or something like that instead to, uh, to keep the paper towels on the roots. So we have an empty suitcase over here that the roses are going to go into after they're prepared. Bubble wrap, tape, a bowl of water, paper towels, and um, at Texas Stores Emporium, they gave us these um, giant plastic bags to lay down in the back of our rental car so that we wouldn't get dirt everywhere, which was awesome. So thank you, Texas, or sorry, Antique Rose Emporium for that. Um, I keep calling them Texas Rose Emporium for some reason. But um, yeah, so these giant plastic bags. So we're gonna put, you know, like the um, foliage and stuff like that in here. And then there's a pair of pruning shears too. So Tess is going to get started and I'm gonna show you basically the process that, um, or I will explain, walk through the process as Tess does it. So here she is. So thankfully with this hotel room, we have this nice balcony that we have space to do this. Again, thank you, Texas A&M Hotel and Conference Center for comping this room. That was really cool. Very much appreciated. So right now, Tess is cutting this rose back. Um, this one doesn't really look like it has any foliage on it, so she won't have to worry about that. But um, 
just cutting back the canes a couple inches, cutting out the spindly ones, anything that looks kind of dead, just to make it smaller so it takes up less space in the suitcase, and also just so it's, you know, easier to pack up and whatnot. Now, we are going to get rid of the soil that is in and the nursery pots that are there so it really does reduce the weight and the volume when bringing it back home with us. So Tess has a cut back now. I cut out some of the video just I didn't have to sit here watching her prune. She has a cut back now. Now she's um, putting the pot on its side and kind of squeezing the soil to get it loose so that she can pull the, the rose out of the pot. She's grabbing the rose at the base. And there it goes. Look, you can see all those lovely roots. Now this part's um, a bit messy. She's kind of loosening the soil. Trying to do it delicately so that she's not breaking roots. You don't want to shock it too much. Now, if you are traveling and you decide to purchase roses while you're on your trip, hopefully you won't be as crazy as me and buy 20 in one go. So it won't take you too long to do them. <laughs> but, but after this one's done, we still have 19 more to go. Okay, so it's coming off fairly nicely. Nice healthy roots there. That looks pretty good. Thank you, Antique Rose Emporium. A lot of these roses I was actually looking for for a while. Interestingly, um, when I reached out to them a couple of weeks ago to say that I was coming, um, I asked, you know, like if I could place an order online and then come um, pick them up in person. And they said that their um, like in-person nursery stock is actually different from their website stock. So. Um, instead of like trying to pre-order anything, I wound up just going there and walking through the field and um, picking out some stuff that I was really excited to see. So um, yeah, definitely some roses that I've been trying to get for a little while now. So um, if you are anywhere local to them in Texas, I would definitely head there to check them out. Um, if not, they do also do mail, mail order online, so you can place an order with them. I did actually also order roses from them um, late 2023 and got them in the mail. Everything was packaged nicely and well received, so they're a vendor that I like to shop with. Okay, so now that she has most of the soil off and kind of like declumped. Now she's kind of shaking the, the roots gently to try and get some more of it loose. Really pleased with the amount of roots this has. It looks very healthy. So they, um, you know, maybe a week or two before we got here, I got an email from someone that um, warned us that it was really cold in Texas right now. <laughs> and um, we got here, and I think it's been like in the 60s most of the time. I've been in a t-shirt and everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy, but um, they did apparently have a freeze last week. So um, when we were out to, uh, my goodness, trying to say Texas Rose Emporium again. When we were at Antigua Rose Emporium, they um, were telling me about how they cut back a lot of their roses so they would fit under um, the like caterpillar tunnels 
um, to help protect them from the frost, so. These we, um, once we get them back, we'll probably soak them for a little bit and then pot them. They're in two gallon pots now. We'll probably move them to three gallon pots and put them in. Our greenhouse unfortunately is full at this point, but we'll put them in the seed farm greenhouse. Um, they are going to be turning on the heat for the season on February 1st. So, you know, only two days in an unheated greenhouse. And, you know, the weather's decent enough that they'll be fine. And then the heat will be on, and then uh, we'll get a head start to the season with these roses, so that'll be nice. All right, so Tess has uh, most of the soil off of that. So now I guess she'll get the paper towels ready. I would just plop that in the bucket. I, so I did that in Arizona, but then I had to change the water fairly frequently. But I preferred doing it that way, actually, just to get as much of the soil off as possible. It really helps keep the weight down. Actually, I think I, I think I might have had two buckets um, in Arizona. One um, to put the paper towels in, and one to to do that. Yeah. It's like... Oh, and uh, while Tess does that, I just want to show you something. We were trying to figure out what this orange glow was across the um, the sky. It was much lower when we first noticed it, and we we're like, "Is that the moon? That's like too orange." But it is. Not sure if you'll be able to see the color well enough, but it was lower. It was like down. Uh, to see those red flashing lights? It was like a little bit below those, just above those buildings there. Bright orange and almost looked bigger than that too. Very, very orange. It was, it's, again, it's hard to pick up the color from my phone, but yeah. Yeah, so this is the view from the balcony, just show you quickly while Tess is getting the other bucket ready. That's their football stadium right next door. It's funny, in the room they have uh, a couple of pairs of um, earplugs. So, well, that was funny. Here's the view. There's the parking deck. There's the water tower over there. All right, so Tess is yeah, there. I used the ice bucket too in Arizona. Again, we're using just whatever we can find. Things that will hopefully be found in most hotel rooms so that you can do the same sort of thing. I forget what I used the paper towels in, but I know that I did the rinsing in the ice bucket because I could use that plastic bag liner so that I didn't get any soil in it and then I could just bag it up and throw it away at the end it was easy clean up that way yeah good so and um, Tess is wrapping the roots in a moist paper towel now you want to make sure to get like every inch of them covered. You don't want them drying out, so um, she'll get that little bit at the the bottom that's sticking out and bundling it. Again, this is also a lot easier when you remember to get the plastic wrap. I forgot it this time, but um, basically what I would do normally is after it's wrapped in this moist paper towel, kind of um, rolling it in a sheet of plastic wrap really gets it to cling tight to the roots and then you can put like um, a paper or no, I'm sorry a rubber band or some some tape or whatever okay so you know if you are on vacation and you're purchasing 
a couple of roses spontaneously. You may not want to go out and buy supplies specifically to bring them home. So I figured, you know, since I forgot the plastic wrap, this would be a good opportunity to show you, um, you know, an alternative solution. So we have these um, plastic bags from Target um, when we did pick up supplies, but you know, if you're buying stuff from gift shop or, you know, stocking up on, on groceries for your hotel room or whatever, you might have some of these. Or, you know, you may, let's say worst case scenario, you might um, use the plastic laundry bag that's in your hotel room. Or, you know, if you have leftover food from going out, you might have some plastic wrap or something like that, I don't know. But anyways, I cut this plastic bag into a couple sheets. We have this one ready and waiting. Tess is going to do a couple more so that we can bundle them together and put multiple wrapped up in one of these um, sheets of plastic bags and then use the tape to wrap around that to hold it nice and tight and in place. Okay, so right now Tess is working on rows three of 20 and um, she cut this one back significantly and I just wanted to kind of address this. Um, it's like hair. It grows back. You know, I know that, you know, you see a rose that's like nice and big and everything and, you know, cutting it back may make you nervous or whatever. But like, as I said, it's like hair. It grows back. It'll be okay. Um, this is something that I learned very, very early on. Probably the, f gosh, maybe 11 years ago now or so. Um, when we first started doing a rose garden at my grandmother's house, we tried to move some roses from our old place to her place. And I mean, at that point, we didn't know anything about roses really and just didn't know what we were doing, quite frankly. And um, I knew that we needed to keep the roots moist. That was about it. Um, I didn't defoliate them. I didn't cut them back at all. So we had um, a minivan full of roses um, that, you know, basically were just yanked out of the ground. <laughs> not cut back, not defoliated or whatever. We did have um, wet paper towels wrapped, or sorry, wet beach towels wrapped around the roots. But um, I think maybe I don't know, how many do you think we tried to move? Maybe like 12, something like that? I think only one survived. <laughs> so yeah, um, you want to, when you're like moving a rose, you want to cut it back, defoliate it, all that, so that um, it has uh, less of a shock and like less, basically less plant to try and maintain after the roots have been disturbed. So. Um, once the roots get fixed into place, the plant gets reestablished in the ground after it's been moved, all that stuff at the top will grow back and it'll be happier for it. So, anyways, long rambling story short, don't feel bad about cutting things back. So she's got most of the soil off this, now she's like rinsing it off in the bowl. Again, because this is going on a plane, you know, we want to re reduce the weight as much as possible. So this really helps with that to get all of that soil off of the roots. Also, it's actually um, something else that I wanted to point out. Um, it's a good reason why a lot of rose vendors prefer to ship either bare root or as like band size roses you know, in the little quart size pots like we do, um, is because soil makes it so much more expensive to ship these roses out. Um, if you have the band size roses or you have bare root roses, you can shove a bunch in a box and, you know, the weight's a lot less. So if you can wait and have some patience for a rose to grow out and leaf out, you know, you can save a substantial amount of money by purchasing them either at Beirut or 
you know, as small young plants. But if you need that instant gratification, then two or three gallon uh, roses like these are way to go. So here they are bundled up and ready to go, two bundles out of four. Here they are in the suitcase, wrapped up in bubble wrap, all nice and tight. Here they are back at the greenhouse in Pennsylvania. I'm cutting them open and getting them ready to be potted up into three gallon pots. Labeling the pots, I like to put paint markers on them with a name um, in case the tag goes missing or whatever. Adding the tag, getting it in there, getting it watered, and it'll grow out and be good to go.